everyone. I'm Advait Italia. I'm a technical marketing engineer at Cisco Systems. I'm from the DNA Center team. In this video, I'm going to show you how to configure backup and restore feature on the Cisco DNA Center appliance. As a systems admin or a network engineer, there are many instances of unforeseen failures and hiccups in the network infrastructure. Like there can be human errors resulting in the system crash or any hardware failures that are in the platform itself or it can be a security threat like virus attacks and the failures may range from power failures to network disasters like flooding. We need to have a mechanism in place to minimize the losses in terms of data and downtime. Backup feature in the Cisco DNA Center comes into the rescue since it helps save the data loss and thereby saving the time and money once you restore it from the backup. This minimizes the damages and cost associated with the unprecedented events which are out of one's control. Now, let us look at some prerequisites that are needed in order to have a backup and restore setup in our Cisco DNA Center appliance. First, we will need an operational Cisco DNA Center with the access of web UI from which we will configure the backup settings. Secondly, we will need a server that is either running on the Red Hat 7 or later or Ubuntu 16.04 or later. For this demo, I have used Ubuntu. Lastly, we will need to make sure that the connectivity between the Linux servers and the Cisco DNA Center is having a low latency and a higher bandwidth connection. We also need to make sure that the firewalls on these Linux servers are inactive so that it gives the Cisco DNA Center access privileges to store the backup files on these servers. Lastly, there has to be enough storage on these servers so as to store the backup files. This will depend on the size of backup taken. We also need to have a super admin user privileges on the Cisco DNA Center and also from the server side we need to have root user privileges so we can perform all the required tasks in the backup setting. Now there are two types of data backup that we can take. One is the automation data and the other is the combination of two, one automation data and the assurance data. Automation data consists of DNA center databases, credentials, file systems and the regular files. The automation data is a full backup. Now let's come to assurance data. Assurance data consists of network assurance and analytics data. The first backup of the assurance data is the full backup. After that, the backups are incremental. Cisco DNA Center creates the backup files and posts them to the remote servers. Only a single backup can be performed at a time. Performing multiple backups at once is not supported. So now let's look at the steps of performing the backup and restore. The first, we will configure the Linux servers that are needed to store the backup files. Second, we will configure the settings on the web UI of the Cisco DNA Center portal. Third, we can use those backups to restore a new Cisco DNA Center appliance. So let's jump right into the demo. Here, as you can see, this is a Ubuntu Linux server that will be using as a remote server for storing the backup files. Now I will show you the configuration steps. First, we will have the status of the SSH that is running in the system. So we'll check the status of SSH server. So here you can see that this command shows that the SSH server is active and running. And this is the first requirement of the remote server. The second requirement is the installation of the rsync utility. I have already installed the rsync utility and we can issue the command for the version of the rsync. So as you can see, uh, I have already installed and the version number is 3.2.3. .3. So the rsync utility is installed. So the third thing that we need to make sure is the appropriate character set that needs to be installed. So over here, c.utf-8 that is the character set that we will need in order to you know complete the task so over here we can see that we get the output of c.utf-8 which is already installed in this step we need to make sure that the sftp subsystem must be enabled and also we need to go into the file sshd-config 
and also uncomment this line and add this line of SFTP subsystem and make sure that it is uncommented. So over here, we open this file using the nano editor and we go to the last uh, portion of it and we see that I have already uncommented and appended this line which enables the SFTP. So we are going to go ahead and save it. And now we're going to verify that the NFS server, that is the NFS version 4 or version 3 is running on our Linux server. And we will verify it by this command, that is service NFS kernel server uh, status. And it is going to show us if the NFS server is active. So over here we can see it is active and running properly. We are also supposed to create a directory structure on the Linux server to save all the backup files. So as you can see, I have created these directories into the specific path that is data, then automation, and then cluster one. So this is the uh, directory structure that the Cisco DNA Center is going to use to store the backup files. So the next thing that we need to do is the we need to append a line to export the file systems of the directory structure to the uh, NFS server. So we do that. We are going to the exports file and then we add uh, this command or this directory structure in the file at the end so that the file system is shared to the NFS server once it is running. So we add, as you can see over here, and then we save it so that the NFS server discovers everything. And lastly, we are supposed to make sure that the firewall is inactive. For the distribution of Ubuntu, it is by default inactive. So we don't need to worry if you're using Ubuntu and we can check the status over here. And now we are going to log in to the web UI of the Cisco DNA Center. Once we log in, we will actually go to the hamburger menu and we will go to the backup and restore page. So that is under the system. So once we go to the backup and restore page, we will see four options. We will go to configure to actually configure the details of the remote server. So over here, I will enter the details of the IP address of the SSH server also the port and the directory structure path that we created on the Linux servers and then the username and password and then we will enter the encryption passphrase. This encryption passphrase will be used to encrypt the components of the backup. This is a required passphrase for which you will be prompted and you must enter when restoring from the backup files. Without this passphrase, backup files are not restored. Once we do that, we will uh, use the apply button to actually apply these changes. We will also input the details of the NFS server, which we configured. And we'll also mention the NFS share or the NFS path. Once this information is configured, we will apply those changes. And now you can see that we can create a backup using the create backup button. And we, it shows that there are a lot of options. We can have a Cisco DNA Center backup with all the data that is automation and assurance, or we can take the backup for just the assurance data. Over here, I am creating the backup now, and you see that there is a provision to schedule the backup or have a schedule for weekly. Right now, I'm taking a full backup and I'm creating the name as Unwait Test. As I create it, I will see that there is a success uh, pop-up that is the backup is initiated successfully and then you can also see a progress bar which states the progress of the backup over here you can see the details and now as you can see it is progressing and it is 30 percent I'm just gonna fast forward it in the interest of time till it completes now as you can see here that the backup is complete and we get a pop-up of success and as you can see, that backup is almost around 700 megabytes for my setup. So over here, there is a status of success and we successfully took the backup of Cisco DNA Center at this point. And now we can go to the Linux server and we can go to this specific directory that we created that is data automation and cluster one. And then we can see uh, that the backup is successful and we'll be able to locate the files. So as you can see over here, uh, we can go, we have gone to the cluster one and we issue the ls command 
and we see that there are a lot of backup files and now these backup files uh, are stored on the name of the UUID that is generated uniquely for each backup so uh, here you can see that we have, uh, we have done multiple backups uh, for example on November 1 on October 31st so all of these backups are stored as a unique UUID directory uh, so this way you can verify that your backup files are saved on the Linux server. We can also schedule the backup for a specific point in time by going into the schedule page. Here we have scheduled backup of a weekly basis. We can also use one of the backups that we want to use for the restore purposes. Just use the restore button and then the Cisco DNS Center is going to go to maintenance mode and it's going to be unavailable and this is how you do the restore process. I have mentioned some really comprehensive guide in the entire process of how to do all the steps in detail. So please refer to this guide in order to get the detailed information. I have also mentioned a link of our official Cisco DNA Center YouTube channel so that you can find some really helpful and useful videos uh, apart from this topic. I would like to thank you for your time and I hope this was useful to you. Thank you so much.